in Norfolk has housed criminals for more than a hundred years. Yeah. When you come to prison, you can't have a choice who you live with. You get the violent people, and then you get like the drug dealers, you get the bows, and we're all in it together, you just have to get on. Rocky, I've got to get my meth. Today, it's home to 800 prisoners, both adult inmates as well as young offenders. Many of them are in for violent offences, people capable of doing some really serious things to other people. But whatever their crimes, half of all inmates here are dads. I get big kisses. You miss your family every minute of every day, I mean, it never changes. The prison knows that for inmates, family is a lifeline. It's to my everything. I love you, babe, love you and everything. And it strives to keep them together in every possible way. Hello, hiya. But every letter can harbor danger. We can find all sorts of things in letters. I found some heroin and SIM cards. That's the price in the bag, mate. Ellie, you got anything on your shirt on you? Every child, however young, has to be searched. Even a baby's nappy can be a hiding place for drugs. It's something we have to do because people do secrete items on children and young babies. Right, turn the face me, buddy. It's an extreme way to conduct family life. Stay strong, all right? Keep smiling. Keep smiling, all right? But at HMP Norwich, it's the only way to keep prisoners' hopes alive and try to stop them reoffending. Prisoners pass through the gates of Norwich Prison every year. As a local jail, the prison's main function is to serve the local courts. Once the other one comes out of there, Mark, we're ready to move a load of these lads up to the wing. But staff here know next to nothing about the new inmates they will have to deal with. No receptions, you have no idea. I don't know if any of these lads are getting off of there, as I say, if they're detoxing, if they need a methadone script, first time in custody, vulnerable. We know none of that, literally, unless we know them until they walk through that door. Right, aerosol, you can't have that, we have to destroy that. More than half of all offenders coming into prison are dads, like Nick Grady. Any pink credit, my man? Nick has three young children at home and is serving a 13 year sentence for conspiracy to supply cocaine. The enormity of the sentence absolutely shocked me. You miss your family every minute of every day. Right, what are you after, two smokers? As the reception orderly, Nick helps officers process new prisoners and settle them into life inside. You get a lot of nerves down here, obviously, people first-timers. They're a bit like the rabbit in headlights sometimes. Right, they're nearly ready to get you a lot shifted then. You get, obviously, the family's worry, you get parents that worry, the wives, you obviously concerns for their partners who, who are in here. Right, who's ready to take these prisoners? Let's go. Nick's also a listener, part of an inmate-to-inmate -inmate support scheme introduced by the prison service to reduce the risk of suicide and self-harm. He reassures prisoners during their first few days, potentially a dangerous time. Ready? Right, let's go, you two particularly for those who've never been to prison before, like 21-year-old Liam Poor. When you got chucked in the cell and the door locked up, that's when you realise that that's your life from another 10, 20 months. I feel like you're cut off from the world. Wrenched from their families, newcomers like Liam don't know the system and don't know who to trust. On the first day I was here, not all this noise started going off and all the screws started running everywhere. And there was a big old fight on the, the landing below me. And that sort of made me realise that it's a bad place to be. You've got to be careful, you've got to watch your back sort of thing. New arrivals at Norwich swap their own family for a very different one. 
here on A-Wing. It's the prison's busiest, with more than 200 inmates, including 30-year-old father of two, Rocky Gamble. Rocky's pleaded guilty to conspiracy to supply heroin with an estimated street value of 200,000 pounds. He's waiting to be sentenced. When I get out, I'm done with it. Someone said to me not so long back, they went, they went, I know you've done well, this and that. They said, but when you get nicked, someone will replace you in 10 minutes. Rocky's been in and out of prison since he was 16. This is his sixth time, but he now wants to break the cycle. The players change, but the game don't. So no matter how big or important you think you are in, in your little world, your drug world, just, just don't want to be involved with it no more, do you know what I mean? It's a mugs game. As well as all new arrivals, A-Wing is also home to anyone on a drug or alcohol detox. Yeah, are we backing up now? So I've got to look after 40 prisoners on my landing, plus there's another 70-odd going up the stairs. Plus, there's another 110 the other side. You can't be everywhere at once. Cheers, guys. Inmates here all have to live together, but they don't always get on. For staff having to manage this large and sometimes dysfunctional family, the potential for things to go wrong is ever present. Thank you, gents. Time to go. You have to expect the unexpected every single time. A prisoner has tried to hide an assault from staff by covering a CCTV camera. Yeah, and then you see the hand come up. But officers discover another camera has managed to capture the attack. Camera 16. They can now identify the offender promptly and stop the incident from escalating. We continue to hear him. He kicks in a minute, okay. Well, yeah. Duty Governor Dave Jeeves orders the young offender to be taken to the segregation unit, where inmates are kept in isolation. He's a really nice fella, but he's always fighting. He's my, ne he's my next door, and I, I was just 20 years old. And I'd say to him, look at me, I'm 30 now. Then I'm in a waste of my life in jail. Don't do the same. You wife Who is it? You fucking wife Rocky wants out of the life of crime and punishment that started when he got hooked on heroin as a teenager. It's fucking shut When I first got habit, it took me two or three weeks to get physically addicted to it. Rocky, I've got to get my meth. Woke up one morning and my legs were aching, I was sweating. And I said, what the fuck's that? I run my pad off, I said, I'm, I'm, I'm sweating and I'm aching. And he went, if you've got it. And I said, you got what? I said, you got the Abbott. And you got a Roger, Roger Rabbit. And I was like this, I was like 17 years old. And I was just like, fuck, whatever have I done? At 20, Rocky became a father. Drugs have already taken him away from his family before. In 2009, when his eldest daughter was just three and his youngest only six months old, he was sentenced to six and a half years for supplying heroin. See, that's um, coming down two mil every week. Can you do it like two mil every five days? He's now on a methadone treatment program and wants to come off drugs completely. Thank you. Cheers. He's awaiting sentence and the possibility of another long stint away from his partner and children. I said to Mrs. I went, yeah, I'll be able to get out early or get decat and try and get home visits, but that never worked out for me. <laughs> Sometimes I sit and wait, wonder why she waits for me, but she's, she's a good girl. Fuck me, I've got to sort myself out, don't I? I can't, I can't lose that kids. They're not saying they're my world, do you know what I mean? While the safety of loved ones coming into prison is a concern for families outside, keeping prisoners safe inside is a major priority for staff. Right, so he's cut his head. In reception, a prisoner needs to be sent out for medical treatment after an argument with another inmate. Mate, something's happened over here. What's happened? I don't know this, honestly. Mate, I swear I don't know this. He has a facial wound, which has perforated his upper lip, but is claiming to know nothing about how it happened. A misunderstanding. A misunderstanding. Misunderstanding has left you a big hole in your face. Not, not necessarily, no. He said he went in his cell, put his dinner down, turned round, and then that's the last he can remember. 
so we don't believe that for a minute. In the hands of a prisoner, anything potentially can become a weapon. Could be a little pen, could be a bit of plastic knife, because it's literally through one end into it, he poked his tongue out through it. Not really a good look. Prisoners will never tell you, they don't tell on other prisoners, because in their word, they would be labelled as a grass, and that's still the word that's used in prisons. Um, you never tell. For first-timers coming into this new world, like Liam, prison can be a frightening and bewildering place. He's still reeling from the shock of being separated from his mum and dad, brothers and girlfriend. As you can see, I put pictures on the wall to try and make, it, make myself feel a little bit more like home. It's to remind me of the people I love and miss. When you feel a bit down, you can feel, it feels like they're with you. Are you good? A bit all right? Yeah. During their induction period, all new prisoners are offered educational courses and work. When you first came into reception, you were given a bedroll. Liam's landed a job in the prison's clothing exchange, a welcome escape from the confines of his cell. And you also get given a wash pack. No slouch on the outside. Before coming to prison, Liam was working as a window cleaner and going to college to train as a plumber. <laughs> first one done. He then made the mistake that earned him a prison sentence. He bought a seven pound stun gun online. He says, without realizing it was an illegal weapon. Boom. Why did you buy it? Uh, just to piss around with my mates with. Didn't know it was a firearm. I thought if, I would, if the police would have found it on me, it would have just been a slap on the wrist. He was arrested, charged with possession of a firearm, and sentenced to 20 months. Both he and his family are struggling to come to terms with his sentence. Some days I've like, hated it in here, but I'm not going to tell them that. As long as I'm not hurt or anything, I'll, I'll, I'll be fine. Visits from family and friends can be a lifeline for inmates like Liam. His mum and girlfriend are due to visit him today. They were shocked to see him sent to prison. I've got to teach in the rain. Yes. You don't miss them and think they're not thinking about you, and then you start panicking and worrying. Nothing else on the Nearly half of all prisoners like Liam lose touch with their families. What's your name? But government research shows those who manage to keep family ties alive are six times less likely to re offend. Okay, okay, any questions, come back and ask me. Oh my god, thanks. Okay. thanks a lot. Prisons recognize the importance of family contact. Norwich has a visitor's center providing support for inmates' loved ones. We tell them exactly what's going to happen on the visit. I always tell them they can take tissues with them. First-time visitors can get very emotional. And we had a lady this morning, actually, that said, I'll take some, but it won't be for me, it'll be for him. Turn on for us. Thank you very much. Two weeks ago, Liam was sentenced to 20 months after buying a stun gun online. He says without realising it was against the law. Right, you know where you're going? Yeah. Down there on the left-hand side, have a good visit. His mum, Lorraine, and girlfriend, Paige, didn't expect him to be sent to prison. I was just so shocked. But it was just, well, bombshell. We had one phone call. He was scared. Yeah. And I could tell that from Liam's voice. Have you been worried about him? Always. Mm. Always. Okay. <laughs> oh, God. I'm on edge now, I'm on edge because I know they're coming. Liam Paul. Thanks. Nervous. <laughs> Nervous as hell. How you doing, alright? No. Alright. Oh. I couldn't sleep last night. Nervous. Yeah. yeah. Oh, I was just getting sleep. How's the dog? Stressing. Missing it. The whole family have affected. It's not just just me and Paige, it's the whole family, even the dog, I think. <laughs> so is Brandon, he's sleeping on your bed. Oh. Horrible, isn't it? Yeah, well, I sent you a parcel. You should get it tomorrow. Yeah. I couldn't find your uh, shaver. Joking me? No, I couldn't find it. I'm going to come out of a big beard. <laughs> Grady is about to get a visit from his partner and children. 
He's two years into a 13-year sentence for conspiracy to supply cocaine. Can Austin. In spite of the toll it's taken on his family, his partner is standing by him. They, they count it down for Christmases or birthdays, four birthdays, which doesn't sound a lot, but in real time it's four years, isn't it? Like all visitors of any age, they have to be searched for possible drugs or other banned items. Come on. It's one of the hardest things about being here, you know, the fact that my children have to get used to this. Many families don't survive this extreme test of separation. Good boy. A fifth of marriages like Nick's break up under the strain of imprisonment. Look, Daddy, look, you going to wave? As a trusted prisoner, Nick is allowed a monthly family visit where he's able to play freely with his children for two hours. Hello, player. Hey, my baby. That's my boy. You got some money? Uh, Olivia, she, she's like, she's a daddy's girl. She can't wait for me to come home. And it's, it's heartbreaking. It really is. How do you feel, Dave? you feel any better? I've got up. I put my T-shirt on back the front. <laughs> Having a good day, then? Well, I've been over. I'm trying to split. Nick was arrested a day after his son's first birthday, leaving his partner to care for their three children. I thought Austin, he's grown up, and he took his first steps in here, pretty much, because it's not new to him. He's been coming here since he was one. <laughs> wow. Well, I haven't seen what my family are going through. And, and the hardness of it. The last year and a half, two years, watching my little boy grow up from a weekly visit. It's not what I want. I'm up. Austin and Olivia are just two of nearly a quarter of a million children in the UK, estimated by charities to have a parent in prison. <laughs> That's double the number affected by divorce. Um, I'll have a diet coke. It's more a punishment on my family than it is on me, to be honest. She's still got to pay the bills, she's still got to get the kids to school, she's got to clean and clothe them. And it's not an easy life. Austin, Livy's going to read. Do you want to come listen? Nick's working towards achieving Category D status, where prisoners are allowed periods of home leave. That's right. I am I'm working my ticket, as we say in here, and I'm doing everything I can to get home as quick as I can. Rocky has never had any home leave with his family. He's been to prison six times, but has often been in trouble for breaking prison rules. And even minor privileges depend on good behavior. People think on the out, they go, oh, when you come to jail, you get, they get given a PlayStation, they get given a TV, and it's easy. And trust me, if you want to earn a PlayStation, you have to earn it. You have to be like, like whiter than white. And I've done loads of burden. Trust me, I've never earned a PlayStation, never. This time, he's been working in the prison's clothing exchange to keep busy. But steering clear of trouble is proving harder than he thought. What's up, boss? Um, did you steal something from the oh, yeah. CES store? I, I put a thing on to keep warm, and uh, he's caught me with it on, and an extra epoxy waistcoat. He just searched me, and I said, oh, sorry, I'll put it back and everything, and he went, right, you're sacked, so he sacked me. They have sacked you from the job. Yeah. So they have put you on basic. Turn on the TV. Um, please. And then I will review you on Sunday. Oh, on Sunday. OK? Thank you. As a result of his behaviour, Rocky's downgraded to basic, the lowest level of privilege for prisoners. You got any questions you want to ask me? No, it's fine, boss. OK? As well as losing his television, he'll be locked up for up to 22 hours a day. Well, as you can see, I haven't been good as I thought of it. <laughs> Fucking basic again. That is hard work about telly, yeah, of course it is. And sometimes at night you just sit here and you think of, obviously, you think about your, especially at night, you think about your family, you think about your, your, your missus, your kids. Rocky and his partner have been together since they were teenagers. She stuck by him through five prison sentences, including his last one of six and a half years. It was like, come on, Gamble, you're going home. And she was standing at the gate waiting for me. That was um, one of the best days of my life. As soon as that gate opened, I see a big old cheesy grin on her face. And then I was at two years, ten months. Then the next thing I know was going through all this shit again. I had enough of it, really, I've had enough of it. And I know my missus, she's, she's had enough. She said, if, if I get involved with drugs again, 
placer. Rocky's one of up to 180 prisoners here on a drug treatment program. Two thirds of all inmates at Norwich have a history of drug use. There is that opportunity for some people to actually decide that this is the time to get themselves clean and get themselves off drugs. Eventually, they get the effect on the family. There is that little percentage that we can help change the lives. You get a lot out of that. You definitely get a lot out of that. Nick's two-hour family visit is up. Right, give Daddy a kiss bye-bye then. Can I get big kisses? Mm, no. Is that it? Oh. It, it, it's, well, it's the hardest moment of the visit. It's, it's, it's the final farewell, isn't it? I'll give them their kisses and cuddles goodbye, and you, know, you just have to walk out. Mm. Just kiss. Mm. Yeah. This is the reality of prison, isn't it? You know, it's, it's not so much us, it's the family, isn't it? And what it does to them. Give me a hug. Mm. A few. Mm -hmm. What do you say? Yes. Oh, you I don't think you ever get used to it. It's something you bear with it, you cope with it, because this is the best we can have at the moment. Five minutes, ladies and gentlemen. Five minutes. Five minutes left, and I go real quick. Liam and his loved ones, too, will have to come to terms with a very different kind of relationship, one dependent on prison visiting times phone calls and letters. Oh, blimey. Back to my enjoyable life. Start finishing off, please, thank you. So I'll see you, I'll see you next week, innit, won't I? Yes, great. Yeah. I miss you, sir. <coughs> Send everyone my love. Give Rupert a big hug for me. So, thank you. See you later. Stop worrying, all right? Yeah, I know, but the thing is, say that you sent me depressing letters. <laughs> That's weird. Stay strong, all right? Keep smiling. Keep smiling, all right? I'll be all right. I'm fine in there. I'm fine. See you later, babe. I love you. I love you too. See you later. See you later. Oh, fucking hell. Oh, God. Sam? Yeah. Carter? Yeah. It's the hardest bit, that. So I've got to try put a strong, put on a strong front, I'm just going to worry more, so... I so hope she's all right. I need him to not worry for me. Oh, fucking hell. It's just, just really hard to see your son go away for something so stupid. I miss him so, so much. This is Martin Lamb's first time inside. He served two years of a six-year sentence. Cheers. But he's one of the lucky few who get to walk through the gates and leave the prison behind each day. It's a sign of the authorities' trust in him. There is nothing to stop me, and I can just walk out down the road and be gone. As a Category D prisoner, he's been assessed as posing no danger to the public, and through good behavior, has earned the right to serve part of his sentence in open conditions. But one false move could see him back behind bars. Once you mess up a DCAT, that's it. You don't come back. He works inside the prison, but as part of his rehabilitation and preparation for release, he's trusted to live just the other side of the wall. This is my abode. We call them rooms, not cells. Obviously, this is a hundred times better than what's round the back there. And the weirdest thing was having a real mattress, because prison mattresses are so old that you're just lying on a piece of wood, to be honest. Martin's view is a daily reminder of just what's at stake. That's quite good in a way. It makes you think about you know, any temptation, you know, puts that out of your mind. 
You don't want to go back there and losing everything you've earned. With continued good behavior, Martin could soon qualify for periods of home leave with his wife and young daughter. Now, my daughter can't remember me being at home. For her, this is daddy's house. For inmates, a vital link with the world outside and their loved ones is the post room at Norwich. Up to 300 letters from family and friends arrive every day. It's to my everything. I love you, babe. Love you and everything. We often get letters which are covered in lipstick and random ones. Smell here. <laughs> yeah, the worst thing is when they put too much perfume on. <laughs> oh. I've got a little card here. It's a little note to say how much she loves him and misses him and can't wait to see him on a visit. For Liam Poor, it's letters that are keeping his spirits up. Yeah, le letters are the best thing in here, other than visits. Uh, I've got absolutely loads at the minute. I can't ring them all the time. So if I write a letter out, I feel like I'm still part of the family, because being away, you don't feel like... You feel like you're just forgotten about. But whenever a prison lets the outside world in, there's potential danger. All mail here has to be checked, because it can threaten the safety of prisoners and staff. We can find all sorts of things in letters. All sorts of things. We've found drugs in letters, and it's amazing how people hide them. I found some heroin and SIM cards. The sniffer dog has identified a suspicious letter for a prisoner. When you feel it, you can actually feel sort of, feels like some sort of graininess or sugarness in there, so it's suspicious anyway to the touch. You can see this white pellet coming out of it. On an almost daily basis, somebody will try and get drugs into this prison, which prisoners then take back to the wings, sell them at highly elevated prices to people who can't really afford to pay for them. They come under pressure to repay those debts in different ways, and that might be violence towards another prisoner or violence against staff. So they break the glass. Put a small amount into the container. It takes two minutes to go, but already it's gone purple, so we know straight away, obviously a positive test. The powder is Subutex, a heroin substitute prescribed to treat addiction. Inside, it's also used as a recreational drug. There seems to be a large quantity here, so I wouldn't thought it was for personal use, so somebody's going to sort of sell this on and, and make money out of it. Martin Lamb is only too well aware of the price to be paid for getting involved with drugs. Before coming to prison, he was a fitness coach and two times British kickboxing champion. He'd even set up a charity gym to train young people and stop them from turning to crime. So I did all that to try and keep kids out of trouble, and then I end up in there myself. And so it was Martin himself who fell foul of the law. Hard up at home, to make some extra money, he became a drugs courier and was sentenced to six years. It wasn't a plan. It wasn't something I went out to do purposely. You literally get coached into chat to people. Oh, yeah, yeah. You know, and next thing you know, you're, you're in it up to that neck deep. And there ain't an easy way out either. Anything sent in from outside can be a hiding place for drugs or other contraband, so every single parcel has to be checked. All prisoners are allowed one parcel from home during their first month inside. Mr. Paul, you got some prop? After two weeks in prison clothing, Liam's got a parcel from his mum. Yes. Shorts, some nice trackies. Oh, I can't wait to get in them. Can't wait to get these clothes off. It's actually like Christmas. Yeah, it's all uncomfortable. This is like extra large, extra large. As you can see, I have to tuck it into my socks. You feel like criminal when you put this on, you do, because it, it just look, everyone looks the same, don't they? Clothing and trainers are the most popular items sent in, but they can also contain hidden extras. 
Concealed in the waistband of these tracksuit bottoms, staff found two wraps containing nearly four grams of heroin. We're looking per gram on the outside of street value, you're talking 60 pound per gram. And then when it comes inside, they either double it, and sometimes they can, depending on how much is in the prison, they can actually triple the money on that. And there's no shortage of potential buyers. Two thirds of prisoners here have a history of drug use. A market based on supply and demand operates inside, just as it does outside. Only here, it's even more lucrative. It's so lucrative that we even have people who get themselves recalled into prison for the sole purposes of coming back in here and selling a whole lot of drugs in prison because there's so much money to be made. Hey, up late, all right? Drugs proved to be Nick Grady's undoing too. When he was younger, Nick did three stints inside. Oh, I understand. I first came home when I was 17. Just lots of the childish things, thefts and stealing cars. A bit of a rogue I was. After being released from his third sentence, he met his partner and made up his mind to go straight. She pretty much changed me, really, I think. She, I settled down with her. No, I finally grew up. He stayed out of trouble for 13 years before getting involved in supplying drugs as a drink and cocaine addiction took hold. I mean, I was drinking a litre of vodka at one stage a day. I mean, that was, that was hideous amounts, really, when I think about it. Madness. I think if I'd have continued on the route I was going, I'd probably be dead by now. Since coming to prison, for the sake of his family, he's got clean. It, it's been HMP Health Farm for me. But for inmates serving long sentences like Nick, maintaining family ties is one of the biggest challenges. That's my latest little letter I got from her. I love you so much, love the visit. Sorry about my handwriting, I think that's supposed to say. But she miss her dad, you know, of course she does. Big part of their lives are missing, aren't they? As well as phone calls and letters, prison dads are encouraged to record a bedtime story to send home. Hello, Morning, Dave. Daphne. How are, you? How are you? It helps maintain a vital emotional bond between parent and child, and is another way for Nick to stay in touch. I'm sure it does help, I'm sure it does. I mean, just for them to hear my voice and stuff. And it's a message they can keep playing over and over again. Watch out, crocodiles are about, flamingos are preening, then one of them spies. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the kids love it. They, they'll have a good laugh at my expense. It's a wild, crazy animal. Run for it, hide. One of my fondest memories is laying in the bed in the mornings and to look straight through to Austin's room, he was in his cot. And every morning he'd be at the end of his cot with his head around the corner peeking at me. I'd be like, morning. So he's like, dad, dad, dad. Obviously, he wasn't even walking when I left. Well, that ends the story for you. I hope that was OK. I love you all. I miss you all so much. Love you. Bye. Introduced to allow fathers like Nick to be parents, even while inside, the storybook dad scheme now sends home more than 20,000 bedtime stories every year. But maintaining a balance between outside and in isn't easy for prisons like Norwich. It regularly receives parcels of a different kind, ones illegally tossed over the wall. We get them sometimes on a daily basis. We're right in the city centre here. Throwing drugs or other banned items like mobile phones into a prison is a criminal offence punishable by up to 10 years inside. In that package was six phones there, and then we've got the different types of charges. The parcels are retrieved by prisoners during movements or reeled in from cell windows. A member of staff was actually fighting with the prisoners that are trying to pull it in totally at the same time. Mobile phones are highly prized because prisoners can use them to continue their criminal activity from behind bars. Rocky Gamble is doing well on his drug detox. Fucking stinking, eh? But he's broken prison rules and is in trouble again. A handmade mobile phone charger has been found in his cell. There we come now, look. He's due to be taken to the segregation unit for a disciplinary hearing. How are you, man? How are you, man? 
Every time Rocky gets into trouble, he's a step further away from being able to see more of his family. When I was a kid and I was coming to jail, and I didn't have no responsibilities, didn't give a fuck. Barricade up, I'd set fire to a cell, I used to be fighting, I used to just cause nightmares. But now I've got older, I'm fucking really trying now, do you know what I mean? I'm coming on, sir. Name a number for a governor? Yeah. Okay. Rocky Gamble, A45, 38 AK. Today you've been placed on charge number rule 51, para 12, has in his possession any unauthorised article, namely that. Do you understand the charge? Yeah. Yeah, and how do you plead? I plead guilty. Please explain. I've had it, I'll be honest with you, I've had it for probably for about six weeks. A conversation come up about how to make them. And the keeps went, yeah, I'll wait there, I'll show you. And he's come in with a matchstick and said, why don't you show me? Who's the person that showed you that? Oh, who's got on home now? The handmade charger was found by a sniffer dog, suggesting it had been plugged into a mobile phone. It'll be the scent from a phone, believe it or not. That's what the dog will find. But believe it or not, that phone charger has never been used. Yeah, I'm not denying that. That's how come it got picked up this time. Nationally, nearly 7,500 mobile phones have been seized from prisoners, even though they can get an additional two years at court with one. Mr Gamble has four previous fines of guilt on adjudication all at this establishment and one of a similar offence, which was a USB lead. OK, mitigation. I have been working since the last time I see him. So if you can, give me a suspended sentence, give me a chance to prove that I can work and not try and fucking hit me too hard. It will be an active award, not a suspended one. But it will be seven days stoppage of earnings at 25%, seven days canteen facilities to purchase, use a private cash, TV and association. So I lost everything for a week? Yeah. There is a pattern to the behaviour and that will obviously be a concern to us, all right? Thank you. Rocky will lose his television again and be locked up for up to 22 hours a day. He's lucky we didn't double it. Yeah, because I have. we have a lot of phones at the moment, mm. and it is a major control issue for us. Basically, I'm on basic again for another fucking week. <sighs> and who have you come to see? I'm Nicholas Grady. Visits are held five days a week at Norwich. They play a crucial part in keeping families together and reducing reoffending. The physical contact and to be with your, your family again, it, it, it's as though the world has stopped again and you're back to that little normality again. Thank you. But the very people who can help turn prisoners' lives around can sometimes threaten their safety and damage their chances of rehabilitation. Over in visits, we have an absolutely golden opportunity there to work with prisoners and engage with our families so that we can put them in a better place when they leave us. Unfortunately for us, it's also a massive risk because every day there are people whose intention is to come here, smuggle drugs or other contraband into the prison. Hello, you're not uh, pat down. Oh, thank you. Yeah. I'm a police officer. Today, the prison is mounting a special operation with Norfolk Police to search for smugglers. In all serious, have any of you guys had a smoke today? Because I keep getting lots of weed. Obviously, it's a shame you've got, you've got uh, young children coming in in little carriers that are only a couple of weeks old or sometimes days old. And it's something we have to do because people do secrete items on children and young babies, obviously. The nap area is a, is a big area. Here's the bag of bag The sniffer dog has found something in the bag of a mother who's accompanying her daughter on a visit. Two little ones there. Was it the two little bags? Yeah. Police discover two bags of cannabis in the mother's bag, so both women are taken off to be searched. Hello, my baby. How are you? Oh, big cuddles, yeah? You me? Nick Grady is working towards Category D status. If he succeeds, he'll be allowed to see more of his young family. When I speak to him every day on the phone, it's still, I'm hearing new words every day and stuff, and, you know, it, it does hurt, of course it does. Hiya. Until he's released, his partner has to bring up their children, and he still has four years left to serve. I said to her at the start, she doesn't have to wait, she can carry on with her life if she wants, but she's chosen to stay there, and nothing's guaranteed, of course it isn't. 
I'm just thankful that she's out for me. I miss you so much. They tell you soon be home. Outside, the mother and daughter are back from being searched. No drugs were found on the daughter, so she'll be allowed in. But her mother, who had cannabis in her bag, won't. She's given a caution and ordered to leave. Right. Tell her you got anything on you can have on you. Sure? Yes, you're quite nervous, aren't you? There's some Is cannabis that... on the back seat where this young man was shitting. How old are you? How old am I? Yeah. You're 18, are you? Okay. Mate, truth and honesty. Is there anything on you? Because you look extremely nervous. No. Okay. You sure? Smuggling controlled drugs into a prison is a criminal offence, carrying a sentence of up to 10 years. As the nervous visitor is led away to be strip searched, he makes an admission. He sort of made a confession as we walked him into the prison. I think the, the gates were a bit daunting for him as he went through. He sort of said, I'll be honest with you, I've got loads in my pants. Kinder egg wrapped in cling film fell out of his underpants. That's how things are usually concealed to be taken into prisons. The Kinder Egg was found to contain spice, or synthetic cannabis, which has been linked to a surge in violence in prisons. At the time of the arrest, it wasn't illegal, so the suspect was later released without charge. When you talk to prisoners' families, they will tell you what a relief it is that we are seen to interrupt drug supply as, as we do, because it protects their loved ones, but also protects them from the pressure they come under to bring drugs in. Martin Lamb is returning from his first home leave with his wife and daughter. To qualify, he's had to show continued good behaviour and pass further tests, ensuring he's not a risk to the public. Obviously, you wait for the last few minutes before you walk up the driveway. So I always like make sure we get here plenty of time. Because if you're late, that's it. You don't go out again. Periods of home leave prepare inmates for living on the outside again. And give families time to readjust to being together. Back to reality a bit now. I think the wife was a bit nervous. Obviously, she's been by herself now for over two years. You've both changed a little bit. This place changes you. And obviously, surviving on your own on the outside changes you. I went really well. I took the girls' school every day. I was pick her up every day. All the things that I've been missing out on. In here, everything just sort of stands still in a way. But out there, life carries on, doesn't it? Rocky Gamble's helping out on the surgery to try to improve his security record and stay out of trouble. Fucking Gordon Ramsay, me, mate. He's been on remand for more than a year since pleading guilty to conspiracy to supply an estimated £200,000 worth of heroin. He'll soon be sentenced. Now it's getting closer, it's starting to plan my mind now. But this is, I'd rather be sentenced. It, it don't matter if you're getting out in three, four or five years' time, you know when you're getting out. Silence. He's likely to face a significant jail term and the prospect of another long stretch away from his partner and children. Five right. I'm embarrassed to say 10 to 12 years, but I'm, I, I hope for like seven, eight, nine or something, do you know what I mean? You get back out there as soon as I can with the family. I miss him a lot, I miss him a lot. For inmates serving long sentences, staying in touch with loved ones is the biggest challenge. Not all families survive this extreme test, but prisoners who do are far less likely to end up back inside. in here and get to Medica as quick as I can. Best behaviour, I owe it to them. <laughs>